Hi, well, I'm Stephen Nesheba, and I'm here to help you out with uh, this idea of differential equations of state for the internal energy in a state space of temperature and volume. So uh, here's what the, uh, the geometric view is. State space of temperature across there, volume going into the board. I'm writing U as a function uh, of that. And you can see that uh, the internal energy has uh, some dependence on the temperature and, uh, and on the volume. And uh, the way we like to think about this is uh, if incremental tiny little changes uh, in either the temperature or the volume would obviously create you know, a, a little change in the, uh, in the internal energy. And that's given by this equation right here. This is the differential equation of state for U of TV, and it just says that a, a small change uh, in U could result from a change in temperature multiplied by uh, a coefficient, uh, or it could result from a change in the volume multiplied by a different coefficient. Um, formally, these, these coefficients are they're the slopes. Um, it's how U changes when the temperature changes, holding the volume constant, i.e. an isochore. So uh, that would be that slope right there, which uh, I'm labeling CB. Uh, this other number here, pi sub t, that's uh, that slope right there, okay? Um, so then, uh, and, and, and uh, it would be written formally as uh, the partial of u with respect to volume while we hold the temperature constant. Now, if we're thinking about a process uh, in which a system is, is, heat, is being heated up isochorically, that means it's being heated up uh, while the volume is constrained to stay the same, then uh, we have a, an easier job of it, right? Because I know that there's no change in the volume so I can strike that term out here, and I know that uh, a temperature change multiplied by that coefficient will produce the, uh, the, uh, a small change in the internal energy. Now, what if we uh, were going to not just uh, go from sm some small temperature increase like that, but we wanted to increase the temperature quite a lot? Well, you can see that the slope might be changing along there. So if I want to get at the full change of uh, uh, the internal energy, which could be indicated that way, um, I probably have to solve an integral. So that's what's written down here. The total change in the internal energy in going from one temperature to another, T1 to T2, would be the integral of CV dt that comes straight from that. Okay, so um, now then let's, uh, we would want to think about a couple of examples. The simplest case is the case where CV is just a constant, okay? If CV doesn't change, if it's temperature independent, and you can imagine that CV comes out of that integral, and then what we're left with is the integral of dt. And the integral of dt is um, just the change in temperature. So in the case of CV constant, we just get that delta U equals CV times the change in the temperature. If you want to think about that graphically, the idea is something like this. I'm integrating CV over some range of temperatures, but if CB is constant, then I have this dashed line right here, and uh, this area right here, which is the height times the width. The height is CB, the width is delta T. So that would be what we'd be calculating. That area would be delta U in the case of CB is constant. Now, there might be a little bit harder case where you can imagine that CB is temperature dependent, and I've drawn a linear case here where, you know, CV looks like A plus B times T. That would be that curve. Geometrically, obviously, there's just that area now. That's what I want. How do you get the area under a straight line? Well, you just put it into there and, uh, and use the rules of um, integral calculus to get the change in U that results from those temperature changes. Okay.